Hello everyone, we are hanging out on the Star Wars The Old Republic test server. We are on there to check out the changes to the Shadow and its uh, mirror, its counterpart, the Assassin. And right now we are looking at it shortly before the expansion comes out. The expansion will be coming out on February 15th, 2022. And with it will be coming a lot of changes to the classes. Um, I have only very, very recently had a chance to check out Serenity and Infiltration, the two damage disciplines for the Shadow. And I am a longtime lover of the defensive tank discipline for this class. So we're going to take a look through the trees. I am not a master. If you want some really high in-depth uh, look at the changes and how it's going to affect gameplay, I can't give it to you, but I can give you a cool look through the tree and all its abilities. And especially if you're a frequent player, you should be able to make some deductions by yourself. So this is actually what the new tree system looks like. If you're familiar with the utilities system the utilities are gone some of them have made their way into this tree and you make them as somewhat of a choice oh apparently that one is a choice okay so we're going to go through the tree i'm going to start with serenity then infiltration then go into defense so all classes are getting these these big changes so what are we seeing on this tree this tree does not show every single one of your abilities. I have put them all down here, at least their icons, if you are familiar. Um, the only things that show up on this tree are one, things are directly related to your discipline, so serenity in this case, or two, things that are a choice. So for example, your basic attack, your saber strike isn't on here at all. The choices are and the uh, main abilities you get are on the center part of the tree and on the right is going to be your passives much like you had before so let's start off with serenity so at level 23 you're going to pick up force potency much like you would before and force imbalance probably the most important move for the serenity class and you'll get that at 23. where it gets interesting is that at level 27 you'll get to be able to pick between three passive abilities that change the way force imbalance works the first one is called Serene Balance. Force and Balance restores 5 force for each enemy hit and reduces the cooldown of force potency by 5 seconds for each hit. So uh, from what I can tell, Serenity is not too hard to keep your force up, but if you're struggling with it, this would be a really easy one to pick. And what's interesting is your force potency becoming more often available may be a good way to boost your damage. The second option is Balancing Field. Force and Balance gains an additional ability charge, allowing it to be used again before going on cooldown. Same thing. Woohoo! Extra Force Balance equals more damage. Killing an enemy or activating Force Potency generates one charge. And lastly, Pervasive Balance. Force and Balance deals 10% more damage and increases your armor penetration by 10% for each target it hits for 10 seconds. So which of these should you choose? We have no idea yet. Um, basically, once... This expansion comes out, people will start crunching the numbers and trying to figure out which of these three options you should use as the best option for any given situation. But in the end, these are your choices. They are up to you and they are something that you actively choose. There is going to be default ones kind of picked, but as far as I can tell, at least on the test server, it's very easy to change between them. Like I'm literally just clicking them to change them. At level 35, you'll get a choice between two passive abilities and one active ability. So force wave is your force push, your big circular force push, and you will not have that by default anymore. At level 35, it will be part of the choice. So if you don't want it, you don't have to choose it, but if you do want it, you actively have to pick it over the other two options. So the other two options are shadow strike. This is not an active ability. It just shares an icon with another one. Dealing damage with shadow strike from stealth stuns the target for two seconds standard and weak enemies are knocked down do i have shadow strike on here take a quick look at my ability list i've been trying to go through these on the fly but sometimes there is some some strange stuff on there I don't know what to tell you about that one. Anyways, 
force wave is your second option. And your third option is force magnetism. Force cloak increases movement speed by 50%. Force speed lasts one second longer and slows all enemies within five meters by 75% for 2.5 seconds when activated. Squelch will be your second important uh, serenity ability. You'll pick it up at level 39 at the moment. And lastly, yeah, isn't isn't uh, Shadow Strike a Consular skill? But it should be in my, my Shadow list, right? I know I use it on, on one of my other characters a whole bunch. Like I said, I just started learning Serenity very, very recently and I'm already very confused about that. Oh, here we go. Okay, so uh, Shadow Strike is replaced by Serenity Strike in the Serenity Tree. So I assume dealing damage with Serenity Strike from Stealth stuns the target for two seconds. We'll assume it carries over. Um, so you'll notice a lot of these actually haven't been proofread. There's lots of little typos and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll see the Imperial version of the Republic ability. And that's because they're on the test server right now. This is not finished. This is not the completed version yet. It's so the players can give feedback. And the last option is Force Magnetism. Force Cloak increases movement speed by 50%. Force speed lasts one second longer and slows all enemies within five meters for 75% for 2.5 seconds when activated. So it's a weird and kind of interesting choice there. So at level uh, 35, you've got your force push, your big circular force push, force wave. You've got a speed boost and slow ability. And your third option is a uh, shadow strike with stealth becomes a stun knockdown. At level 39, you'll get your squelch. Um, just like you kind of would before, your squelch is a major, major part of your serenity rotation. Um, but at level 43, you get to pick one of three abilities that majorly changes the way squelch works. So the first option is Destruction Ray. Squelch now deals all its periodic damage over one second. Uh, dealing damage with... Oh, so instead of it being something that kind of ticks over six seconds... The second option is Ensue. Dealing damage with Squelch applies Ensue to the target, increasing the critical hit chance of your periodic effects by 10%. Nice, so more damage. And lastly, Smite. Whenever a target affected by your Squelch dies, it bounces to the nearest target, instantly dealing its initial damage and priming the target for being smited, causing Squelch to deal an additional 25% damage on initial hit. So this first one might kind of be interesting, especially if you're attacking enemies that aren't super, super strong. You could uh, actually take full advantage of Squelch since you don't have like that full time for it to tick. Um, same thing, we're just going to watch the Theory Crafters, which are the type of players who like to look at the numbers and see what looks fun, or more importantly, what will do more numbers, more damage. So at level 47, you got another choice, and you'll notice that Battle Readiness is on here, and you have to actively choose Battle Readiness now. Battle Readiness is an interesting ability. Um, by default, what it does is it heals 15% of your health, and it also... Uh, I believe, heals you over time if some of your other abilities trigger. And then if you're playing a damage character, you're especially going to increase the damage of all techniques by 50% um, while it's active for 15 seconds. So that's one that you had by default before, but now you choose on the tree if it's what you want out of these three options. So, especially if you're a player who's not very good at keeping track of all of these buffs and debuffs and all that kind of stuff, uh, you could choose not to take it and instead get these passive abilities that just kind of happen in the background. For those of you who like the complexity of the class, we'll have to watch the Theory Crafters and see if it's better to take Battle Readiness, which it probably will be. I would think it's a pretty, pretty big boost to damage. Um, but the other one is Longing Force. The critical hit chance of your periodic effects is increased by 5%. Whenever you are healed by Serenity class effect, you generate one force. And lastly, Hallowing. Killing an enemy and activating force potency resets the cooldowns of all melee attacks and squelch and increases their damage by 10% for 20 seconds. Stacks up to two times. Okay, I lied. We're definitely going to have to see some numbers about this one. That's kind of crazy as well. So at level 51, you'll get Sever Force, which is an important part of your rotation. And at level 60, uh, you'll start making a choice that is actually visible on, on all three of the trees there. 
Um, it's only the kinetic combat choice that actually has a bit of a change at level 73 because they are a tank and things get kind of funky there. So at level 60, you're going to take a look at these three options. The first one is intangible spirit. As kinetic combat reduces all damage taken while stunned by 30%. As infiltration and serenity, which is what we're looking at right now, reduces the damage taken from area attacks by 30%. So this is a, a defensive ability for us. Uh, sturdiness. Activating deflection grants 6 seconds of immunity to stun, sleep, lift, and incapacitating effects. So not quite a use it with deflection, which is a defensive ability, but it's a, a movement or give me movement focused effect. And lastly, fade reduces the cooldown of force cloak by 30 seconds and extends its duration by five seconds. So it just makes your cloak out work better. At 64, you'll get your final serenity focused ability, your uh, serenity strike. And at level 68, you'll have another choice to make. Your first option is, they're all three passives, kinetic surge. Increases your movement speed by 15% and your effective stealth level by 10%. Activating Project, Psychokinetic Blast, or Squelch in our case of Serenity. Increases your movement speed by 50% for 9 seconds. This effect cannot occur more than once every 18 seconds. So, a uh, movement speed focused effect. The second option is Force Phase. Force Speed and Shadow Stride grants Force Phase removing all movement impairing effects and granting immunity to them for two seconds. So allow me to move effect. And lastly, Lambast. Or Lambast? Not sure, sorry. Increases the damage done by Whirling Blow by 25%. So just a straight up damage boost if you're spinning around. At level 73 is where all classes, all disciplines, all combat styles have a difficult choice to make. It's lamp based. Thank you very much. And so at level 73, you will have the option of two, oh gosh, three abilities that you click. There's no more passives. Um, so by default, one of them will be selected and you won't get the other two. You can actively change it. You obviously can't change it mid fight. And I'm still not 100% clear whether you can choose it before a fight, say in an operation or a flashpoint. So we'll kind of have to see exactly how that's going to work when it comes out. But your three options are, as a shadow for both serenity and infiltration are going to be first cleaving cut. So you may be familiar with that as the being the, uh, the newer AOE ability. It's a conal right in front of you. It just hits multiple enemies uh, directly in front of you. The second is force lift which is your crowd control. It lifts up an enemy. And I did see that someone said it was instant now. And that was something kind of different than what it was before. So instantly lifts a target. And lastly, resilience. Purges all hostile removable effects and increases your chance to resist force and tech attacks by 200% for three seconds. Does not break stealth. So your options are cleaving cut, which is uh, another AOE. Um, but not part of any of the infiltration or serenity main rotations that I know of. Uh, your crowd control, your lift, or your resilience. So obviously, if you really need a huge boost to defenses, you're going to take resilience right away. But it's going to be kind of a bummer to not have just all three at once, all three available when running through, especially trash enemies during operations, I think. And force lift is obviously used to, to uh, keep things kind of out of the way. But you'll still have... As you notice here, Mind Maze, the uh, the crowd control that you can use while you're stunned. So it shouldn't be too, too rough of a choice, I think, for most players compared to some other classes. Yeah, <laughs> um, we have our friend. We actually have our friend Merlin in here saying shadows have one of the easiest choices at that tier. Yeah, they really do seem to. Um, so cleaving cut, like I said, not really used in your rotation. Lift, definitely useful to have, but you don't have to cry too much about not having it. And resilience is very good. Defensive and cleanse, especially for more difficult fights. Um, for level 78, you also have one final choice to make. You have three passive abilities to choose from. Stalker's Swiftness. Shadow Stride grants Stalker's Swiftness, allowing your next spinning strike to be used on any target, regardless of remaining health. Stalker's Swiftness lasts for 10 seconds. 
Additionally, if the target of your Shadow Stride is killed within 10 seconds of using Shadow Stride, Shadow Stride's cooldown is reset. Ooh, yeah. I think that one's actually something we use uh, quite a bit for both the Serenity and Infiltration uh, discipline. If you're familiar with the utilities, um, some of them have kind of moved their way into the tree here. So you may uh, recognize that wording and stuff like that. Second is Celerity. Reduces the cooldown of Mind Snap mind snap by two seconds force of will by 30 seconds and force speed by five seconds and cloak of resilience activating force cloak grants two seconds of resilience so i think this one's especially going to be like a per fight kind of thing so once again to go over when you log into your serenity or in, in any case your infiltration character as well you'll notice you may not have force wave right away it's because it's an option of three right now you may not have battle readiness right away. It's an option of three. And you may not have force lift, resilience, and cleaving cut as they are uh, one of three options that you can choose from at level 73. So there's also all the passives, um, much like you had before. Some of them are combined together. Some of them are removed. Some of them are new. Some of them are renamed. Some of them have new icons all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to go over the names. And if you want to look at them, just uh, zoom in on the YouTube video and you can take a look. So we have mind and body at level one. At level 23, you have prolific justice. At level 35, you have force suppression. At level 43, you have force strike. At level 51, you have Drain Mind. At level 60, you have Rebounding Force. At level 68, you have Crush Spirit. At level 73, you have Aching Mind. And at level 78, you have Atrophying Attacks. So now let's go take a look at Infiltration. You'll notice if you look at this block down here, it doesn't change too much when we switch over to Infiltration at all. But the top will be very different and so will our passives. So for infiltration at level 23, you'll pick up force potency much like you would before. And you'll also pick up your vaulting slash at level 23, uh, one of your important abilities tied to the infiltration discipline. And this is just kind of a attack that you use uh, from stealth or within 15 seconds of performing a critical strike. So if you just run up to a target, this guy, is the one that you can't use right away. It's like, no, but you can use it from stealth or sometimes it just magically starts working while you're playing. I just learned this like yesterday. Um, but what's interesting is at level 27, you will be able to choose an ability that changes the way vaulting slashes works. So the first option is Absolver. Absolver, uh, killing an enemy within three seconds of dealing damage with Bolting Slash resets the cooldown of all damaging abilities and increases your critical hit chance by 40% for six seconds. Dang. All right, that's pretty powerful. Let's take a look at what the other options are. Increases the armor penetration and critical hit chance of Bolting Slash by 20%. And lastly, Energized Blade, critically hitting with direct force attacks, resets the cooldown of Vaulting Slash. A vaulting Slash costs 10 additional force. Oh, I've not, I haven't seen one so far that makes a, an ability more expensive to use. So once again, we'll wait for those players who like to do that theory crafting, who like to write guides, to take a look at the numbers. They'll probably go test on some dummies and stuff like that and see what uh which of these they recommend because some of these are going to change the way our rotation works as well so possibly whole new rotations will come out if if those ones are deemed to be the ones that are the the best to use or the most damaging so at level 35 you'll remember that you had to choose force wave uh earlier if you wanted it and your other two options are actually exactly the same here uh, between Infiltration and Serenity. So level 35, you can choose Force Wave, which is your big force push all around you. Second is Shadow Spike, dealing damage with Shadow Strike from Stealth. Yes, we actually have Shadow Strike on this character. From Stealth, it stuns the target for two seconds. Standard and weak enemies are knocked down. And lastly, Force Magnetism. Force Cloak increases movement speed by 50%. Force speed lasts one second longer and slows all enemies within five meters 
by 75% for 2.5 seconds when activated. 39, you'll pick up your Clairvoyant Strike, much like you would have before a major part of your infiltration spec, but at level 43, stuff changes. So you may remember that your Clairvoyant Strike, you use it to build up some stacks of Clairvoyance, uh, which makes fun stuff happen for the rest of your abilities. But let's take a look at how you can change it at 43. So the first option is Visionary Defense. Clairvoyant Stacks built by Clairvoyant Strike increases your damage reduction by 5% per stack. In addition, Clairvoyant Strike slows its target by 30% for 6 seconds. So both a defensive ability and a slow. The second option is Vision Engine. Clairvoyance stacks built by Clairvoyance Strike increases your critical hit chance by 10% per stack. So, damage. And lastly, dealing damage with Clairvoyance Strike reduces the cooldown of Force Potency by 2 seconds. So, a roundabout damage through Force Potency. Um, so, then at level 47, you'll have another choice to make. Much like the Serenity, you'll have Battle Readiness as a choice, not automatically. And your other two options are two passives. So, uh, once again, Battle Readiness is both a heal as well a damage of all techniques by 50% increase and increase the chance to trigger their effects by 25%. So, it's both a heal and a, a buff to your damage. So, if we take a look at our other options, they are... Far Sight Instruments, critically hitting with Clairvoyant Strike, or a Direct Force Attack, generates 10 Force, and heals you by 1% of your max health. This effect cannot occur more than once per second. Um, so Clairvoyant Strike, use it decent about during your, uh, during your rotation, and instead of having Battle Readiness, which will heal you when you click it, um, critically hitting with Clairvoyant Strike will heal you 1% and will give you 10 Force. And so the other option is Critical Augur. Force spending melee attacks now benefit from Force Potency and consume its stacks. You deal additional kinetic damage to targets who critically hit with melee attacks. This effect cannot happen more than once every six seconds. So it's going to be an interesting one to see, the, see where the math checks out for that one. Then at level 51, you're going to pick up your Low Slash. At level 60, you're going to make the exact same choice as you would in Serenity between um, damage taken while stunned reduction and area attacks. Oh, sorry. As infiltration reduces the damage taken from area attacks by 30%. The other one is deflection grants 6 seconds of immunity to stun, sleep, lift, and incapacitating effects. And lastly, fade reduces the amount of time uh, your force cloak takes to come back up. At 64, you'll pick up that Psychokinetic Blast, and then you'll make the same choices as you would through Serenity that we went through earlier. Most most interesting one, well, actually not the most interesting, but at level 73, you'll pick between Cleaving Cut, your Lift, and your Resilience, and in most cases, you're probably just going to take your Resilience to so that you can take less damage if you're getting hit by stuff. Um, so next we're going to go check out all the passives for infiltration. I'm just going to read them, the titles, and you can zoom in if you want to read the text and pause the video. Shadow Technique at level 1. Shadows Respite at level 23. Circling Shadows at level 35. Profundity at level 43. I'm really getting a vocab workout here. Infiltration Tactics at level 51. Potent Shadows at level 60. Shadows Mark at level 68. Judgment at level 73. And lastly, Kinetic Field at level 78. So now let's go take a look at the tank for this class, uh, which I haven't played in a while, but I really enjoyed back when I played it. Um, and they actually are one of the few trees that have some differences down the line here. Um, and that's specifically because they are a tank. Uh, that's the, the long and short of it. So instead of a... Did they make that same choice? What changes? Oh, that's so funny. Hang on here. They actually do have the same choice. But for some reason... Uh, force... Okay, so Resilience seems like it's built in for the tank compared to the other two specs. 
as it's a, a highly defensive ability in cleanse, kind of important for tanks to have defensive abilities. And so they, they pulled Force Wave and put it into that spot. They pulled it down and they put Spinning Kick in its place up earlier in the tree. So we'll go through the whole thing and I'll show you what it looks like. So at level 23, you'll pick up Force Potency. And you'll also pick up Cascading Debris, a major part of you being a tank. And Cascading Debris, it ch uh, channeled ability over the course of about three seconds and deals rock damage. But more importantly, it helps you um, build up some other stuff to be a tank. However, there is going to be at level 27 a way to change how it works. So the first option, Chained Cascade. Cascading Debris pummels nearby targets each time it deals damage. Kind of interesting. You get to hit multiple enemies. Second is antagonizing debris. Increases the damage, critical hit chance, and threat generated by cascading debris by 10%. And lastly, kinetic cascade. Cascading debris deals 20% more damage to targets you have mind controlled and restored five force whenever it deals damage to them. So very interesting. The first one is hits multiple targets. Second is just a straight up damage and threat boost, which is probably what I'll wind up using on my tank um, for a single target. And then lastly is extra damage and restores force. So at level 35, your your options kind of interesting. So uh, you will not have spinning kick by default. However, you will be able to choose spinning kick at level 35 as a tank if you want it. It's a, a minor damage, but more importantly, it's a kind of stun. Uh, I don't really know what our set bonuses or tacticals are going to look like. Or, or sorry, our set bonuses are becoming something called legendary implants, but it's the same thing. Our set bonus and our tacticals um, performs a spin kick and stuns the target and does damage. Um, so if you want that, you can have another stun. And the other two options are energized project. Project's critical hit damage is increased by 50% and dealing damage with project extends the duration of mind control by three seconds to targets already affected by your mind control. <gasps> Ooh, I like that as a tank who's bad at keeping aggro. Yes, please, mind control. And the other option is Force Magnetism. Force Cloak increases movement speed by 50%. Force Speed lasts one second longer and slows all enemies within five meters. So uh, a speed boost and a slow. At level 39, you'll pick up Kinetic Ward, which is a super important part of being a shadow tank. But it, it's, a, it's a shield that you put on yourself and it kind of, they're small shields and they, they stack up. So right now it says erects a kinetic ward with 15 charges that increases your shield chance by 18% for 20 seconds. Each time you successfully shield, kinetic ward loses one charge, does not break stealth. But here's how you can change it through one of these three options. So the first one, gloom ward. Each time you consume a charge of kinetic ward, the cooldown of masked mind control is reduced by two seconds. If kinetic ward is broken by damage, it deals damage to nearby targets, generates a high amount of threat, and finishes the cooldown of Force Breach and Slow Time. That could be very interesting, because both of those are important too. Dusk Ward. Each time you consume a charge of Kinetic Ward, a, the cooldown of Force Cloak is reduced by 2 seconds. If Kinetic Ward is broken by damage, it reduces the accuracy of all nearby enemies by 20% for 6 seconds. So kind of a, an extra defensive there. And lastly, Twilight Ward. Each time you consume a charge of Kinetic Ward, the cooldown of Force Potency is decreased by 2 seconds. If Kinetic Ward is broken by damage, it grants one charge of Force Potency to you. So very interesting, all about those wards breaking and what will happen if they do. If, you're, if, you're, uh, if your little rock shield breaks, what happens? So at level 47, you'll have a choice. Uh, so first off, Battle Readiness is apparently a choice again why the tank would uh have to have something that heals them as a choice i cannot i cannot answer you but your other two options are potent defense consuming a charge of force potency grants you nearby allies potent defense increasing damage reduction by five percent per stack potent defense stacks up to three times and lasts six seconds so instead of allowing yourself to have a heal that you activate when you need it um you could instead choose this first one which kind of defends your entire group which could potentially be more useful over the course of a fight. 
And second is light forces. Each time you deal damage to a target, you have mind control. You restore two force and heal for 1% of your maximum health. So another potential option. Oh, and Merlin wants to point out that for tanks, battle readiness also provides uh, damage reduction, specifically for the kinetic combat class. So at level 51, you'll also pick up your slow time, which is your slope. And also, I believe it's part of your rotation. Having a hard time remembering. Haven't played this one in a while. And at 60, you'll start making those similar choices. At 64, you'll pick up your force pull, much like you would before. Um, so at level 73 is the only thing that really changes. You'll choose between cleaving cut, that uh, weird frontal conal attack. I did something to my bars. Oh, I entered combat, so it's saying I can't change them anymore. Um, force wave, so your push all around you, or your force lift. And so next up, uh, we'll take a quick look at the passives for any of you who wanted to read them and compare to what you have right now. We have combat technique at level one. At level 23, you will have psychokinesis. At level 35, you will have one with the force. At level 43, you'll have Kinetic Bulwark. At level 51, you'll have Particle Acceleration. At level 60, you'll have Double Bladed Saber Tactics. At level 68, you'll have Pulsating Force. At level 73, you will have Harnessed Shadows. And at level 78, you will have Shadow Wrap. So uh, once again, there are some major changes coming to the classes. Um, for our shadow, it really looks like that battle readiness is a weird choice now. That's going to be the biggest one you notice missing. Um, your force wave is also something you may notice is missing right away, but you can choose it if you want it. Not a problem. And for tanks, you've got that kinetic kick that is now going to be a major choice for you, as well as force lift, um, cleaving cut, and for most classes, the the resilience there will be your final level 73 choice if you're already running a shadow on the live server i would love to hear about what you're thinking about the changes any of the specific options you're going to choose between this and how you think you're going to play your shadow in the expansion like what discipline do you guys play let me know in the comments below if you want to show your support for these in-depth looks into upcoming star wars yoda public stuff and guides visit satarisa.com support and if you want more videos like this to show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. By the way, we're actually just recording this live on Twitch. So if you ever want to come hang out live while I'm recording these, visit uh, twitch.tv slash Sotarisa. And I stream every weekday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. PST. Okay, bye. See you guys later.